get me. From Studio A in Arcata, behind the Redwood Curtain, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcast. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's this episode's host from up the coast, the man who puts the X in Xbox and the tie on antisocial, comedy soundcast soundcaster, Tyson Saner. Saner. Thank you, Bill Haywat. Salutón, Belichan Krisnazkon, Belicha Chanuko, and if you're listening to this between or after December 26, 2022, to January 1st, 2023, Belicha Kwanza Ah. Welcome to episode number 335 of Succotash. That is the last episode before Christmas of 2022. I am Tyson Saner, and I will be your host for the duration. If you listened to last week's episode, number 334, then you know it was hosted by show creator and executive producer Mark Hershon, who I share hosting duties with for alternating episodes. In that episode, you were no doubt delighted to enjoy the content that he brought you in the form of a show titled Seasons Clippings, which featured five, count them five, clips from other people's soundcasts. Namely, the soundcast known as Hey Riddle Riddle, Jordan Klepper Fingers the Conspiracy, Man Thinkers, the Salty Language Podcast, and Fandom! Exclamation point. Also, there was no spot from our longtime fake sponsor Henderson's Pants to be heard in that episode. There was, instead, a brand new spot from Bill Haywatt, offering his masterclass on running masterclasses. It's a well-stuffed stocking of an episode, and I urge you to check it out whenever you can. It is still available to listen to through the listening platforms Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Audible, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Amazon Music, Podbay, Podchaser, and at our home site, SuckatashShow.com, where we have that episode and all the other ones dating back almost 12 years in the Suckatash archives. But that was last week, and this is this week, and for this week, I've got three clips for you from the soundcast known as Hollywood Palms Podcast, The Besties, and The Viral Podcast. I've also decided to include a classic holiday season Henderson's Pants ad because it is the season. I can't think of any reason to delay the proceedings any further, so let's get to it. First up, Hollywood Palms Podcast from Genius Royale. Its show description says, Each week we interview a guest and then give them a palm reading and talk about their past, present, and future. It's very short and to the point. This show has about seven or eight episodes right now, and the clip I've chosen to use from episode four, which features Sarah Benincasa, is from November 16th, 2022. The description says, We chat with the phenomenon Sarah Benincasa and give her a palm reading and hear stories told. Are you a, are you a believer, or is, it, is your curiosity because you're like, this is all bullshit, and I want to see the bullshit like in front of me? We're uh, I'm a I'm a believer and an unbeliever all at once. Yeah. You know, okay. All right. We, I think that we can, if, if you read a sun sign horoscope in a newspaper, is that bullshit? Yes. But if if I read it and it says today you're going to meet a beautiful man and also your dog is going to throw up and then be fine, and I go I hate men who look like my father. Well, I've just learned something about myself. So to me, the value in it is that I do believe there are some people with 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 psychic abilities and extrasensory perception and things that are not that we can't uh, analyze. Right. So I am a believer, but I also think that the true value is. Whatever you say to me today, what jumps out at me as either um, correct or incorrect or uh, fascinating or upsetting or whatever, my emotional reaction to what you say, that's where the message is. That's where I have to go do the work and go, why did that jump out at me? Interesting. And so it's not so much to me about you being correct or incorrect. These are silly terms to use. What it is to me, it, what, what, what the value of this experience to me is um, that it helps me investigate myself further. And so I think that when people are providers of spiritual healing and scrying and the such, the ethical practitioners um, help people in that way. 
that was extraordinary. And I think that that is now what we're just going to tell people our show is all about. All the things that you just play that for people. This is yeah. Who are. Well, it's it's you. It's the two of you. From what you've said to me, are exactly this. Like I think yeah. my philosophy is exactly this show is the melding of these two, and that's why it's so special to be here. Because you are clearly Mulder and Scully, clearly all all at once. So yeah. sexy in so many different ways. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited, but Queetlet gets to hold your hand, so, so I'm also let's, jealous. Let's get into that. I love your take, by the way, Sarah. I, I Yeah, I, I have nothing to add to it. That's exactly, I think, what we're trying to explore. Um, I mention it pretty much every episode. My style of palm reading isn't channeling spirits or anything like that. I'm not psychic. I I don't think I'm calling upon any like extra sensory power here. The style of of my palm reading, and you will find out because I will walk you through it in painstaking detail. Uh, yes, you it, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, you will. <laughs> Painstaking. Go ahead. Carry on. Yeah, Sorry, no, I love. I like the reinforcement uh, that I should keep doing it that way. Uh, <laughs> I I would. I feel like. What I'm trying to do is I can see a painting and I'm trying to describe it to you. Uh, so it is a collaborative effort. Uh, and again, it's, it is what you mentioned is I may be correct or incorrect, but it should still uh, invoke something in you, evoke something in you. Uh, and that will be the experience. Uh, okay. So having a look at your palm, you are indeed right-handed, right? We're looking at the right palm. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good. Uh, what I do is I read the four major lines on your palm. Uh, I will go through them quickly just for review. Again, painstaking detail over the next seven or eight hours, by the way. So I hope you have the free time. Settle in, everybody. Yeah, get comfy. Uh, so I start with your lifeline. Uh, I move into your fate line, your headline, and then your heart line. These are the four major lines that I read. There are millions more, but my system generally focuses around these four. Uh, So starting with your lifeline, it's the one that starts between your thumb and index finger, and it curves around your thumb pad towards your wrist. Uh, What I immediately look for in the lifeline are any breaks in the lifeline. Breaks aren't necessarily good or bad. They just represent traumatic events in your life where you have to put your life on hold to deal with something could be good trauma uh like winning the lottery could be a bad trauma like going into a coma (laughs) and there's no in between for him no it it is a light switch yeah so it's (laughs) one or the other i don't see any breaks in your lifeline which is which is essentially great I, i mean that you could read that to mean that, like, oh, I won't win the lottery. No, it just means that winning the lottery for you won't interrupt your life. You will just roll with that new uh, lifestyle. That uh, feels correct. I feel like I could incorporate <laughs> uh, winning the lotto into my existence quite easily with my zillions of dollars. Yes, 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 yes. And Good. also seemingly going to a coma. Also, you wouldn't miss a step. It's a nap. Yeah. It's a long yeah. nap. It's a it's a traumatic brain injury followed by a long nap followed by agonizing uh, physical recovery and, and neurological and therapy. therapy and recovery, which we would never minimize in a joke. Which I realized <laughs> as I was making the joke. So I'm just giving the transparency. <laughs> Apparently, that would I would roll with it though. We yeah. would you know, yes, that's yeah. cool. Confirmed. So there's not much information to be had about this soundcast or its hosts. But I did manage to work out through re-listening to this episode that I've clipped that one of the host's names is Portland Paulson, I believe, and the palm reader is Quitla Wezo, I believe. I'm not 100% sure about either of those things. They have a Patreon, and on it, uh, that is patreon.com Hollywood Palms, on that I gleaned what their first names were. So there's additional information. You can reach the guest, Sarah Benincasa. She is no longer on Twitter, but she is on Instagram at Sarah J. Benincasa. That is all orcas, S-A-R-A-J-B-E-N-I-N-C-A-S-A. You can also find her at Sarah J. Benincasa, spelled the same way, dot medium dot com. The show does have a Twitter presence, and that is on Twitter. It's Palms Pod. That's capital P-A-L-M-S, capital P-O-D. And you can email the show at hollywoodpalmspod at gmail.com, which I am tempted to do to learn more about the people who have this soundcast.
Next, The Besties, from Chris Plant, Griffin McElroy, Justin McElroy, and Russ Furstick. Its show description says, It's the game of the year meets King of the Hill as four of Earth's best friends, Griffin McElroy, and then it just names the four guys again. They rank and review their favorite video games. Because shouldn't the world's best friends pick the world's best games? It's a good question. I would say, yeah, probably. The clip I've chosen is from an episode from November 17th, 2022. It's called Boldy Going, Where No Hedgehog's Gone Before in Sonic Frontiers. In its episode description, it says Sonic Frontiers, the open world iteration of Sega's fast rodent simulator, is kind of a mess. But is it the fun kind of mess? Like when a can of spray cheese explodes in your car and it's gross and everywhere, but man, it'll be a great story later. Let's talk about it. And also a random assortment of other new releases. Also discussed, McPixel 3, Somerville, Pentiment, Game of the Year Award nominees, Reservation Dogs, and Andor. In this clip uh, is the end of the conversation about the game Somerville, which leads into a conversation about the game Pentiment on Xbox Game Pass. It, it really is, I think, sort of a, a tone, tone piece, right? In the same way that Inside and Limbo was, but it's not a very fun one for me. I guess Little Nightmares is the other like analog, right? And uh, I know you really like Little Nightmares. I, I did, but that yeah, I mean that game was you know scary, and it was I think much gamier, much like, gamier. This is, yeah, I, I like this game a lot, but it is it's like a playable movie. There's yeah. very minimal game here, and I mean there are puzzles. Griffin, where you, after the first half, even the puzzles like disappear. Um, for the most part, I think the game is much more interesting in the second half. But yeah, if you're not vibing with it, I do not. It, think yeah, you it's necessarily it, need to keep going. It, it, it's just yeah, there's just not that much that happens in it. Like it, they they hooked me. Like the world <laughs> and the 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 presentation of the game and everything they're going for. Like y'all got it. Like I'm 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 down. And I have played it longer than I think I I, I would have. Um, had it, had it not been for that hook of like, oh, I I gotta know like what is going on in this world. I have to know like, is is this uh dude gonna you know find his dog again? Like all of this stuff. Like that that's the hard part. You did that, and I'm into it. It's just the the just nothing fucking happens. Yeah, and I, I it's on Game Pass right now. I hope it gets added to PlayStation Plus whenever it goes on to that platform because it is the perfect like subscription service type of game it's only a few hours yeah and i think it is going to be a bit more divisive than limbo and inside like this and if you like it you know it's again like a movie you can kind of like start it and if it vibes vibes and if it doesn't i I think i might just watch like a YouTube video yeah. of the ending because it's it's uh I I don't have a lot of gaming time these days especially this last week we were on tour and uh this game does not run great on Steam Deck uh I had to I I tried playing it and then I stopped and played the rest on my PC um which is wild it doesn't seem particularly intensive but uh, yeah and the weird thing is it's much better on a TV too yeah. that was I played I played it through the first time on Steam Deck and. It, it's weird how for an indie game with like the very kind of um not simple low yeah, low, I guess low poly sort of low poly vibe. look it actually wants to be on a big tv it, yeah. it's the aspect ratio is extremely wide yeah um which again does not there's your not quote ideal for portable for yeah, the box right the aspect ratio is so well wide. except that the wide aspect ratio really showcases how long this fucking walk from <laughs> right to left is gonna be uh through this forest and sometimes you have to stop because a purple ray tries to disintegrate you. it's it's yeah uh i was disappointed i thought it was gonna be hot shit uh because i love this this, com- this these developers lineage but um not, not, um, not if people me. want to read the review, I, this is the rare time I did a review at Polygon, so I'll make sure to link that on Twitter.com. Um, the perfect place to put all your important content. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll definitely be safe there. Uh, I've played uh, Pentiment, which so far is the most stridently boring game I've ever played, and I'm kind of fascinated by that. <laughs> its unwillingness to be captivating in, in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> 
and I will continue to play it because a lot of people really liked it. I know it's there. I'm like impressed the scope and scale of yeah. like nothing interesting in it whatsoever. This is so cool. Yeah. Uh yeah, I've played like thirty minutes of Pit of it. And it, it, it might is it, am I being unfair? <laughs> it no, it's, it's, like, it's like, like the most vegetable as vegetable. It's raw broccoli. They didn't even saute it. The for reviews you. were so positive that I know. I that's why I know hurt. I know this is in I'm no way. I'm really critique. looking forward to it. I I this feels like the game that I'm gonna be the asshole who just will not stop talking it's, about dude, it. It feels like a dare. It really feels like oh really? <laughs> There's like no voiceover and it all okay. Uh, seriously, it's uh, just a, it's all voiceover. It's set in Bavaria in the 16th century. Oh man! All, all the drawings look like uh, like uh, uh it's like medieval uh, art. Medieval style. art illuminations would 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 block print marginalia. That. I don't even know it. If I knew enough about this game to talk about it well, yeah. I would probably be interested. Not by smart it. enough. Not me and Juice ain't smart enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm gonna finish the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Guarantee. Because I don't like myself very much sometimes. (laughs) I just did a bit where you have to choose, like, your city of origin. And it's like, are you... I can't wait to get there. That sounds really captivating. It's pretty early on. And then it's like, wow, do I want to be from Flanders, where I will be able to speak a little bit of Dutch and recognize some of the cultural touchstones from Flanders? And it's like, (laughs) wow! (laughs) Move aside, Elden Ring! Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Buttman69 here. I've got a new build for... (laughs) Pentiment, you want to go with the Flanders route, guys? This one's broken. This one's broken. Go with Flanders, and then when people say Flanders shit, you're gonna totally get it. You'll have the gold camo quill within a day. Okay. I can't, I, this is we'll circle no back on Pentiment yeah, because it also yes, seems absolutely. like the most interesting game of the year. But it's fucking yeah, it's 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 books level boring right. at the start. <laughs> so you can reach the show on Twitter at the Besties Pod which is all lowercase T-H-E-B-E-S-T-I-E-S-P-O-D. Chris Plant can be reached at all lowercase plant with an E-P-L-A-N-T-E. Griffin McElroy can be reached at all lowercase Griffin McElroy, G-R-I-F-F-I-N-M-C-E-L-R-O-Y. Justin McElroy can be reached at lowercase J-U-S-T-I-N-M-C-E-L-R-O-Y. And Russ Frischtick can be reached at all lowercase Russ Frustick, that is R-U-S-S-F-R-U-S-H-T-I-C. And the show's website is listed as the McElroy family, excuse me, the McElroy dot family forward slash besties. That is www dot T-H-E-M-C-E-L-R-O-Y dot F-A-M-I-L-Y forward slash B-E-S-T-I-E-S. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house "'not a garment was stirring, not even a blouse. "'The shirts were hung by the jackets with care "'in hopes that some pants soon would hang there. "'The boxes were nestled all snug in their drawers, "'while socks, athletic and tubular, had been left on the floor.' And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap were worn out from discussing our marital gap. From the hangers in the closet there arose such a clatter, I yanked open the door to see what was the matter. I pulled skirts and blazers aside like a flash, yanked down all my ties, my belts, and a sash. Though the weak light in that cupboard could barely show the inside of the place where all our clothes go, yet what to my wondering eyes should appear? A dozen new pads to cover my rear. Being hung like a sailor, I'm sorry, being hung by a tailor so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his hands they did fold, those pants on wooden hangers so old. He said, oh, now here are some pants they designed for Nixon, and two pairs of trousers custom made for Wolf Blitzer. Check out that zipper, make fast the clasp, for soon pants from Henderson's will save your sweet ass. (laughs) You've heard of their dungarees, pet pants, and khakis, their 
Wake Island shorts were proclaimed to be tacky. Won't you please try on a pair of Henderson's best, perhaps some turtleneck trousers with a vest, or ballet pants, clam diggers, space pants for sure. Why not their drifter chinos, picnic pants, and more? There are plenty of Henderson's pants to go round. Great pantaloons at a bargain are yours to be found. That jolly old fellow, he saw I was a skeptic and realized that the hard sell at Christmas made me quite dyspeptic. So he mellowed a bit and gave me a smile and suggested we just kick back for a while. I asked him point blank, do you have time to waste? You've only got one night to be all over the place. He laughed and said not to worry. Thanks to a secret, he was in no hurry. He showed me from the sides of the trousers their sprouted wings, with pockets so deep he could carry all of his things. A sail spiel on Christmas? Are you joking? You can't! He winked and he said, Brand new from Henderson's. They're the new Santa Pants. Originally made for sneak thieves, elves, and guys who sit on thrones in the middle of department stores right after Thanksgiving, Henderson's original Santa Pants are available at the North Pole. And that's it. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Henderson's, makers of nice knitwear and naughty naga hide since 1829. And now back, ho, 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 to Succotash. Thank you again, Bill Haywood. Finally, the viral podcast from Chelsea Lynn and Paige Jin. Its show description says, Chelsea Lynn and Paige Jin are comedians, not therapists, but they have a podcast which is pretty much the same thing. The clip I've chosen is from episode 60, very recent, posted on December 6th, 2022, in which Chelsea Lynn and Paige Jin talk about terrible roommates, human tables, goals, salt baths, self-help, jokes, would-you-rathers, oh, do me, and much more. Clip I've chosen is from a surprising bit of medical information that may or may not be true. I need to buy an underwater camera like now. Yeah. Well, I've got GoPros. Whoa. I have like four of them. Whoa. Yeah. She rich, rich. Yeah. Well, I bought them over the span of Span of, you know, a few years, but yeah. Cool. Can I borrow one? Yeah. Thanks. For sure. Yeah. You Let got... me take them so I can actually, like, charge them all up and stuff. 100%. And connect them to the phones. Absolutely. I'll let you do that after we film this pod. Cool. We're going to have a great time in Mexico. I don't think I've ever been to, like, those parts. Really? I've been to Cancun once. Loved it. Water what part was are a... y'all going to? We're going to Cosmel. And we're just going to, we got an Airbnb, and we're just going to live it up. So we'll let you know next pod what that was like for us. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I'm pumped. Anything else you want to say? Uh, damn. You good? Uh, not really much to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same. And we are filming a pod, so that's probably a problem. It's a big problem. Well, let me look. Let me look at my topics. Okay. Do, 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 do. Or we could we can, sing something. We can go into a segment. Well, let's just see if we have one thing. Okay. Anything. Just a topic off the top of your head. I just want to see what I wrote in here. Okay. Sometimes she'll think of topics when we're not filming and she'll write what? Oh, this was a good one I wrote down. What? Hospitals. <laughs> Can sell your placenta for fifty thousand dollars, but you can't take your own placenta home with you. What the fuck? Are you fucking serious? No, and I know I'm being dramatic right now, but I'm dead serious. What the fuck? Yeah, you're already paying fucking a hundred dollars for a Tylenol. I know, and they're gonna keep your placenta, and they can sell it, but you can't take something that Uh. just came out of your body, motherfucker. I'm taking it home with me. I'm having I'll, a home birth. I Why will, won't they let you take I it? I will go down fighting for that shit. But they can sell it for 50000 I don't fucking think so. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. 50 k They can make a profit off of it. your placenta. Okay. And you who can, knows what else they're doing with it. You can keep my placenta. I better not be getting a fucking bill. Yeah, and give me some money also. Exactly. Are you? I never knew this. It says here in most cases it's fine to take home your placenta. Oh, we just for oh. burial or, or uh, consumption. 
as long as you follow the basic health and safety precautions. Ooh, I just so freak, no. freaked out for no reason. No, it's it's all over TikTok and stuff. People <gasps> have been trying to take home their placentas and they won't let them. What? Yeah. Whoa. But some people eat them. Right. Placenta smoothies. Ooh. We're gonna get a, we're gonna get a lot of messages about this because a lot of people either have babies or work in hospitals. So they'll tell us what's going on. Yeah, let us know because we hope it's not true. My heart is pounding. I just got so mad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I scrolled upon it and then I was like, huh? I and just got I'm mad. I'm like, I'm going to write this down for the pod because. I just got really mad. Oh, man, I was fuming. <laughs> My blood was boiling. Heated. And we would probably never even have the opportunity to take our placenta. Oh, my gosh. Because that's just only if you have a kid, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I wonder, though, like, if they do sell your placenta, who are they selling it to? Research reasons? But why would research charge pay $50,000 per, per placenta when there's so many placentas out there? <laughs> <laughs> there's companies where they send the placentas and then they make pills and stuff that I, you can take. I have. So cr- maybe they're making a bunch of pills. And selling them? Those hospitals are, are already making enough fucking money oh, off of yeah. people. It's like they 30 should... grand to have a baby. Oh, yeah. And they say by the time your kid's 18, it's well over a million dollars that you've paid for it. <sighs> Probably now with inflation, God be up to two mil. Oh, yeah, because I heard that as a kid. Yeah. It's at least two mil now. Or five. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, my God gosh they should give you the option to where it's like hey do you want to sell want us to sell your placenta and you you get the money yeah they can get a small fee maybe for selling it for you but damn then dude then people would just be having babies just to make that's a that's a whole year's pay right there (laughs) then they'd just be having a baby a year just to live true true wow very interesting very interesting that one got me. Let us know. Please. Let us know, please. I know we're going to be are bombarded with DMs and stuff. I'd love to know what's going on. Me too. Is there something we don't know about? Obviously. So, all right. Very interesting. Way to start the pod. So you can find The Viral Podcast on Instagram at The Viral Podcast, all lowercase T-H-E-V-I-R-A-L-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. On Twitter, they're all lowercase The Viral Pod. Spelled the same as before, just remove cast. Chelsea Lynn is on Instagram and Twitter under all lowercase C-H-E-L-C-I-E-L-Y-N-N. And Paige Jin is on Instagram at P-A-I-G-E-G-I-N-N. And on Twitter, it is all uppercase P-A-I-G, two underscores, and then lowercase M-A-S-T-E-R, master. And you can also watch the show on YouTube. They have merch you can find at theviralpodcast.co. And that brings us more or less neatly to the end portion of episode 335. I do hope you found something in this episode that was enjoyable, and perhaps you will now go in search of one or all of the soundcasts you heard to listen to more of their content. If you do, tell them Suckatash sent you. You'd be doing us a huge favor, and we appreciate you for it. We also appreciate your listening to the end of this episode so you can hear me tell you how much you are appreciated. In the spirit of the season and of the idea itself, be sure to remember to tell those that you appreciate that you do as often as you can. I feel like that might help foster a social environment that would be more beneficial to the overall psyche of society, if that's a thing. I believe it can be. So, until after Christmas, I've been Tyson Sainer wishing you the happiest of holiday seasons that could ever be possible. Thank you to my friends and family, of course, my wife and my son, my mother and father, my brother, his new husband, and all my in-laws. And thank you, Mark Gershon, Joe Paulino, Bill Haywatt, Kenny Durgis, and Scott Carvey for more than a decade of the feeling that I belong somewhere. Enjoy episode number 336. See you again in episode 337, probably. Be decent to each other, and if you wouldn't mind, please pass the succotash. 
You've been listening to Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast, with your host, Tyson Sainer. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuckatashShow.com. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suckatash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at tyson at suckatashshow.com or call into the Suckatash Skype line at our toll call number 818 921 7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Suckatash. Suckatash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Sainer. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Suckatash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Suckatash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.